Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Punts and Buns. I'm Robert. Alongside me is Jose. Thank you for tuning into another exciting episode after a long hiatus. Today, we'll be diving into topics such as opening day, which begins tomorrow, the Otani Ipe betting scandal, which you all are aware of by now, as well as MLB expansion, which has been discussed a lot throughout this offseason. Uh, Jose, do you have any comments before we get started here? Well, no, uh, we haven't done this in just about two years, right? We, we started right. this two years ago, did I don't know how many episodes, seven, eight, maybe, and then gave up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now we're trying this again. So now we, we have a little bit more knowledge, hopefully, of what we're doing. Uh, we don't have Sean here with us today, but he does... Uh, he is still going to be one of uh, the guys on here, so just excited to try this again. Yeah, for sure, and we do touch football, remember that, but uh, Sean's usually more of our football guy, so uh, today we won't be really touching back on that. So, But, yeah. So, all right, I guess our first topic here that we're going to discuss is opening day. Um, very exciting. It's practically Christmas. Um, we're just get a whole slate of baseball games tomorrow. Um, so I was just going to run through and see what we got going, maybe some quick predictions for the year. Uh, so just first and foremost, uh, tomorrow we already do have two postponements. The Brewers and Mets and the Braves and Phillies will both be made up on Friday afternoon, uh, as those were both already rained out and uh, rescheduled. Um, so the first game, the first pitch tomorrow will be the Angels and Orioles. You have uh, Patrick Sandoval and Corbin Burns uh, on the hill. And hopefully that's a good one straight out of Baltimore. Hopefully they can avoid any weather that may be coming in, and uh, hopefully get a we get a few good games tomorrow. Yeah, I mean it kind of sucks being those fans, right? You baseball fans, I know you, you're waiting all winter, right? As soon as the last mm -hmm. out of the World Series is done, you're waiting. <laughs> And then now you got to wait just one more day. <laughs> it, ex exactly. Oh, and it's just, a, you know, people pay these premium prices for the opening day ticket uh, when, you know, that second day, when there is the second day, because, you know, sometimes they leave that that day after as a buffer day um, for in the event there is a rain out. But you pay that premium price for that opening day and then and you take off work and you're ready to go. And then it gets rained out and the attendance figures don't look as good because people aren't in the seats because they have to go to work. Um, so it's kind of a bit of a disappointment when you do see that, um, having been to many games in my life that have been rained out, even some random game in the middle of June, always disappointing. Uh, but you know, tomorrow's another day. There's always sunshine and we're ready to go for another fun day of baseball. And, and so, Robbie, you were just telling me off camera that you are scared that your opening day in Chicago, not the actual opening day, but <laughs> home opener at Wrigley might get, uh, rained out as of right now yeah it's last so i checked there was a necessarily it's wednesday night <laughs> as we're recording this but uh opening day chicago 90 percent monday yep it was last i checked was a 91 percent chance of rain mostly in the morning uh looks like as it goes into the afternoon about 70 percent chance so hopefully it can hold off and they get the game going and hopefully get at least a good four innings and uh and hopefully we can get a good game in and hopefully the cubs can kick the crap out of the rockies and Give a big old uh, wave to Chris Bryant. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you're if you're making it there and it's a day where it was supposed to rain, hopefully you get more than the four innings. That hey, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But as long as we can get a game, it's official, so you can get through that four and a half point, um, and you get that the official game on the, on the books. Then you know it's hey, the the part of the opening day that makes it exciting is the the festivities. You know, you have the introduction of all the players and coaches. And you just got like, it's just a different vibe around the ballpark. Um, if you've never been to an opening day, uh, I strongly urge you to get to one just because it is a good time. And it's just, it's, it's just a different atmosphere. It's almost like a playoff atmosphere in early April right. or late March. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you look at the slate there, Jose, are there any games that excite you for tomorrow outside of uh, obviously Cubs and Rangers with the reigning world series champions uh, going against the Cubs on ESPN tomorrow night at uh, 7:35 Eastern. No, I mean, obviously, as a Cubs fan, I'm just going to be keeping an eye out for, I guess, this year in the Central, more the Reds, I feel, more than any of the other teams. Brewers, mm -hmm. besides Brewers fans, I feel like have taken a step back. I mean, we took their manager away from them. <laughs> Cardinals, their pitching rotation's gone already, which, like, oh, no, you signed a bunch of 35-year-olds. <laughs> 
I'm 31, but signing a bunch of 35 year olds and nobody's gonna be able to make uh, that first couple games. Like, who would have thought that would have happened? Uh, oh, right. Pirates, pirates still don't really. Are the pirates? <laughs> Uh, their 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 ownership is atrocious. The Pirates. Yeah. I mean, they've been they've been a mess ever since they pretty much lost McCutcheon the first time, right. uh, and they've. I mean, and you know they were all about let's fire Clint Hurdle. It's like, well, how about you make some better decisions and get players that people want to come see. I mean, you have one of the be- most beautiful ballparks in this in the country, and nobody's there to see the games because who who wants to go pay for that? Right. Yeah. Uh, so then, yeah, it kind of leaves you with the Reds, even though sports books like are still showing the Cardinals as favorites over the Cubs, some of them, which I don't really, I they're just going off pedigree at that point, like. I, yeah, I think they're going off that, and I think they're going just off the offense. I mean, that that offense was it had a real down year last year. I mean, you got two of the bet mo, uh, excuse me, uh, two generational talents at the corner infield spots in uh, Arenado and Goldschmidt. And you have a great catcher in Wilson Contreras who had a very off year last year. Uh, that that team could turn around offensively, but I just don't think they have the pitching and bullpen to, to keep up with it. They do have a top ten bullpen, but I don't know how much that can handle if you know if your starters are only giving you three four innings. So, yeah, and that's my biggest concern for for the Cardinals. I think I cut you off at at a, a point when you're reading off those opening day <laughs> games. So you want to finish that off? Yeah, well, uh, let's see. I was just I was going through some some hot ones. I mean, you got a probably a pretty good one with the Giants and Padres at four ten Eastern, uh, with uh, Logan Webb and you Darvish on the mound. Uh, Cardinals Dodgers start the same time in L.A. with Michaelis and Glass now on the mound. Uh, Blue Jays Rays, you got Barrios and Eflin. Uh, Twins and Royals, that's kind of a sleeper. <laughs> Tigers and White Sox, that's another sleeper. It's the that's the AL. Central in a nutshell, though. Um, <laughs> uh, and you got Pirates, Marlins, uh, Astros, Yankees. You know, you all, you know the Yankees always like to uh, to see good El Tuve play. So um, that'll be a fun one for sure with uh, Cortez and uh, Valdez on the on the mound for there. Uh, and then we'll have a couple other games there, and then we'll round off the nightcap there with uh, uh, you got the Rockies, Z-backs, Guardians, and Athletics, and then the Red Sox, Mariners, all on the West Coast. Uh, Starting at ten ten Eastern for some late night games. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm mostly most break, so I'm I'm watching them all, and I just got the uh, T-Mobile uh, MLB TV. Finally, they waited last minute to give it to us. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it, it's I mean it'll be a lot of fun for sure, um, top to bottom. I mean, baseball is it's it's amazing. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's just going to be a fun year. I hope. Um, so, which ones are you anyways, excited for? Uh, probably the game the, uh, outside of the Cubs. I mean, obviously I'm going to say Cubs because, I mean, look at me. Um, <laughs> um, I'm excited to see uh, how the Orioles come out, um, knowing they were so strong last year and just happened to just fall apart in the postseason. Uh, really hoping they can start off strong and they have a good chance to get a good start against the Angels. Um, I am also uh, Astros-Yankees. That's always an exciting series. Um yeah, those are probably the big two, other than uh, other than the Cubs. Yeah, and isn't it crazy how how much weight we put into that first game of the season? Like, there's mm-hmm. like the Cubs will lose opening day or win opening day, and I'm like, that I don't even care about like the next. <laughs> but, yeah, and it, it, as as the season starts, though, as as we all know, you can you certainly cannot win this division in April or May. But you can absolutely lose it. You can dig yourself in a deep enough hole to where you're not going to get, you know, you can't dig yourself out of it too easy because there's too much competition going down the stretch. Right. Um, but you can you can certainly you can certainly lose it, but you can't win it. So you just got to take it one game at a time. And uh, but yeah, opening day is just something special. Both uh, true opening day, which is tomorrow, and then uh, your respective team's home opener, always a fun time. So. Well, now we have a uh, oh no, Epe. <laughs> I mean, at this point, we're kind of late on this, and uh, this is kind of one of the stories that kind of not convinced me. Convinced me is not the right word, but like kind of got me going at the idea of trying to do the podcast again. There's just so much to talk about, and especially like baseball's baseball's biggest star, right? It might be the sports biggest star sports, right now. Bi- yeah, yeah, exactly. 
and all this stuff going around uh, the possibility. Some people are cheering at the fact that this would possibly get him kicked out of baseball uh, and happy that then he would be looked at as less than Babe Ruth and that one Facebook group, Boomer Facebook group that we're part of. (laughs) Like, that's crazy to me that people yep. would think that. Like, they really don't – they're more scared of Babe Ruth losing his spot as, like, you know, like the old-timey baseball fans, like, best player ever, that they'd mm-hmm. want to see something bad happen to, like, the face of the game. A- absolutely. And you know what? I grew up watching the Sandlot. I grew up uh, just studying baseball. I grew up reading – biographies, books, you name it. Um, Babe Ruth was known widely as the greatest who ever picked up a baseball bat. And, you know, there's no question that he still will forever be one, one of the greatest. Um, It's really hard to compare players of specific generations and specific competition and different styles of play that to really directly compare Otani and Ruth, but there's, there's definitely some sort of talent comparison there with the two way players that are dominant on both sides of the ball. Um, and you just, you haven't really seen much of that since, um, Babe Ruth. I mean, and that's kind of why the comparisons there. I mean, sure. You had players like for the Cubs, you had Carlos Ambrano who could handle bat pretty well. The Giants had Madison Bumgarner who could handle a bat. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, it, it it's, it's not the same because Babe Ruth and Shohei are both so dominant the pitcher and there's just consistently dominant at the plate throughout their careers. Um, so yeah, it's it's very disappointing to see people rooting for failure of a, a young great athlete, uh, based on uncertain allegations at this point. You know, discredit everything that Otani's done based on some allegations that may or may not be true. Uh, it it it's really kind of sad to see that people are rooting against somebody being so good just because it kind of you know affects or um, threatens their golden boy as being not considered the quote unquote greatest of all time anymore when it's really hard to compare generations as it is. Um, you know, you have different styles of play and you have all these other things that are just really hard to compare. Uh, what are your thoughts on that there, Jose? Yeah. You know, right when it first came out, it, it almost seemed like, I mean, it, it came out when they were in South Korea, right? So, Correct. um, they're in South Korea, whatever. They play the first game, and all of a sudden, you know, I, I'm big like talking baseball guy on Instagram. That's mainly where I get a lot of my baseball stuff. And you know, I just saw the thing that said uh, Shohei's translator Ipe um, has been like basically fired from the Dodgers and had like a meeting with them like in the clubhouse after Game One or something. Mm-hmm. And then just, you know, like each day something new has came out to the point where it's like, oh, no, it's it's nothing. Oh, maybe he helped pay off his buddy's debt. Oh, it was an illegal bookie. Oh, but it's his friend. Would You'd probably do that if you had the money for your friend. Yeah, but it's also illegal because you're using an illegal guy. Um, and then it came out that it's like it was never baseball. It wasn't betting on any baseball stuff. And then it came out that he didn't pay for anything. Um, And uh, did you watch the press conference, the 10 minute, the like 15 minute thing? Yes, I did. Um, And first, it it was not the easiest to listen to or watch because uh, with the translator in between everything. (laughs) Um, But it was, uh, I did pick up on it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I I thought he seemed quite genuine and quite uh, transparent about the topic. Um, I know that's not necessarily always true. I mean, these guys are trained in media and they know how to put on a poker face when they need to. Um, So it's really hard to say, but yeah, it's like kind of like to build on what you said was that Ipe Mizuhara, he was betting on soccer, NBA, NFL, and college football and stated that he had never bet on baseball um, because he knows the rules. And for those who don't know the rules surrounding it, um, players can gamble. There's no question. Players are allowed to gamble, uh, but they cannot gamble on baseball in any way, shape or form. And that by the rule is, uh, uh, MLB rule book, uh, section 20, rule 20, or rule 21, section D uh, says that uh, any player, umpire or club or league official or employee uh, is not allowed to bet on baseball and they shall be declared ineligible for one year if they bet on baseball in a game in which they are not 
associate with. So even in that case, that's not any reason to ban Otani for life. I mean, it's right there one one year max at that point. Um, it's when they start betting on games like what Pete Rose was doing, where he was, you know, that which is rule two, where you are betting on games that you are involved in. And then that puts you permanently ineligible, much like Pete Rose and much like some others who have ended up in that in that category. But uh, and then lastly, which is what this rule seems to be following, uh, is that you can bet on other sports. So if he's betting on football or betting on soccer, um, that's fine. There's no nothing wrong with that. But also there is a rule against doing it within a legal bookie, um, which is what happened because California is one of 12 states where it is not legal uh, to bet on sports. Um, so that is, that's, that's the biggest concern right now, considering we don't have any reason to believe that they were betting on baseball or rather Ape was betting on baseball. We have no reason to believe right now that Otani was doing any of that whatsoever. Um, but that, that's kind of the, the point there. Right. Yeah. I mean, at this point, all we can see is just, uh, see what the investigation shows or doesn't show. And uh, mm-hmm. I know Otani and uh, who was it? Miguel Rojas on the Chris Rose rotation. Like they talked about if, it, is, if there's any effect of that on the team. And they said, no, it, it's like, it's just business as usual. It's just like stuff that's happening, but like they, they're not thinking about it as a team, like or they're not letting it affect them. Uh, like, to stop them from winning any games. So I guess that's good. Or yep. Bad. Right. I and I mean, the Dodgers to be good, but <laughs> I mean, you, you know, you just got all these people comparing Otani to Pete Rose and it's just, it's a completely different scenario um, to, to what we know it for, for fact is, I mean, you know, Pete Rose got busted when he was managing games. Um, it did come out later that he was also doing some well, while playing as far as I'm aware. Um, but also, I mean, People should be, from what I see, people should be starting to compare Pete Rose to Wander Franco. I mean, if you've read uh, all this other stuff about, you know, him having a sexual relationship with an underage girl, it's like, why are we comparing him to Otani? I mean, should be comparing to Franco right there. But, I mean, I digress. So, <laughs> and uh, I think the last thing that we had uh, set to talk about was the MO possible MLB expansion, right? Yeah, so I mean that's that's probably one of the biggest topics that was throughout the entire offseason is we kind of had a, a slow, uh, slow free agent market despite having a, a hell of a free agent lineup. Um, it just everything kind of moved so slow. Like, I mean, it was just kind of dragging on and on. Like, when is Bellinger going to sign? When is this going to happen? Where's Otani going to go? And it just seemed to take a lot longer than a lot of people were expecting based on previous years. Um, so the pot topic in the offseason was possible relocation and expansion more so we're going to discuss the expansion aspect uh we already know the uh, the oakland a's are soon to relocate to las vegas um but as for expansion teams i mean you've heard a lot about charlotte i mean they already have uh pro sports and the other three major sports um you've heard a bit about nashville they already have a couple other pro teams there uh and you've also heard a bit about salt lake city um they do have one pro team with the uh the utah jazz for the nba um but all three of those cities do very well with their minor league teams, their minor league attendance. Um, it could very well see any of those three cities being a, a hot place for, for a new market, uh, whether it be a relocation or an expansion. Um, and have you, I've also heard some rumblings about possibly doing international expansion, such as, uh, although technically not out of the U.S., Puerto Rico and um, even Mexico City or other areas in Mexico, or even bring it back to Montreal. Um, so it's... Uh, it's exciting to see they're looking into that. Um, well, what are your thoughts on that, Jose? Anywhere you, you think the uh, MLB should put a team or would be in any way, relocation or expansion? Um, I mean, anytime this comes up, and like you said, it's, it was definitely a topic all off season. Um, you know, yeah, exactly. You hear, you hear Nashville, you hear Montreal, you hear Vegas, you hear Portland, right? Mm -hmm. Um, is there any way the athletics don't make it to Vegas? Um, that's, uh, that's hard. I mean, I think there's been nothing, I mean, there's nothing officially set in stone yet. I mean, they did just close the Tropic, the Tropicana hotel and casino. Um, 
that is where which is the area that they plan on putting the stadium on that part of the strip uh so that just closed or i think it's actually set to close uh, on april 1st so my apologies uh it's set to close here shortly um but I, th- I think there's like some people protesting saying that uh you know there's like groups that feel that these public funds should not go to stadiums and they should go to schools and and stuff like that as opposed to uh having these these huge stadiums i mean if you if you've been out to vegas and whether you've been to a game or not um the stadiums they got there for the nhl and the uh and the nfl are they're, they're pretty big stadiums they're, they're they're definitely beautiful at least i've only seen them from the outside but they're they are good looking stadiums and they're real co- close proximity to the strip so anybody who's staying uh you know on the on the strip there is, has easy access to get to those stadiums um so i mean yeah i mean the fact that i don't know it's like it's the same thing here in Chicago, right? So we have the White Sox that are trying to get publicly funded, like their brand new, like whole area, or at least it was proposed, right? And then we also have the mm-hmm. Bears trying to do the same thing, and like they're trying to move. It's like these billionaire owners don't want to pay. I don't know. I I don't know the exact number, right? But like for their what? business. Right, mm-hmm. and instead it has to be you and I uh, paying right. for it. You know, obviously I'm not paying for the entire stadium myself, but like for money, <laughs> for our money to go to that instead of a school, instead of the roads, instead of whatever other thing, uh, it's kind of crazy to just to make yeah, somebody, I, I... to make somebody else money. Even though I'm a fan, I'll I'll, I'll give you money buying your T-shirts, buying your jerseys, except the fanatic one, fanatics ones. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know I'll, I'll pay the freaking 10 bucks a hot dog and 15 bucks for a beer i'll give you money that way i don't I, right right you know so um no and and i think the whole concept of just kind of what you're building off of here with the um with the white Sox and bears wanting stadiums it's just it's first off the white Sox stadium it's it's a hair over 30 years old I mean, it's still a nice stadium. Needs a little bit of updating at this point, but it's still a very nice stadium. Um, it's a great place to catch a ball game. Great proximity to the highway. Easy to get to through public transit if you feel comfortable taking public transit to the stadium, um, just based on the location of it. And uh, it's like, I mean, I I can get there in twenty less than twenty minutes if there's no traffic. Um, it's it's super easy to get to. Uh, and the the Bears, I mean, I get that stadium is really old, and they but they went through a multi million dollar um, remodel back in two thousand three when they put the spaceship on it, um, and it just looks. Uh, I mean, I I think it looks. I don't like how it looks. I think it looks ugly currently. Um, I think I'd rather them all try and go for another hefty remodel on the stadium um, rather than just build a new one because i mean soldier field's got so much history I mean, it's been around since the early 20s um and they've had various events from concerts to religious gatherings uh football games ski jumps you name it, it's been there car car races like they've had lots of uh lots of events there over the years it's kind of got that that like wrigley-esque aspect of just being loaded with history right and I mean, I know the Bears do want an indoor stadium, or the city of Chicago rather wants an indoor stadium so they can, you know, host the Super Bowl or host a Final Four um, and host these big events that these other cities like you see Indianapolis or L.A. be able to host because they have the uh, the indoor capacity to do so. Right. And I guess we kind of got away from the whole expansion. Thing, but... we, we did. We did. We did digress a little far from there. But so back back to circle back there. Um well, it's uh yeah the I think I think that would be good for the MLB to expand maybe two teams only. Um, I think going a little bit beyond that, you do have some teams that don't draw as well, like Oakland, for example. They're not drawing well. I could see them actually completing that move to Vegas that has done very well with their other sports teams and has a great market for um, locals and tourists alike. Uh, Salt Lake City, they've done they do very well with their team. Portland, their their teams are great up there. They um. Their, their uh, MLS team, I know it's uh, not one of the four major sports, but uh, their MLS team, they have a pretty good attendance record over there with the Timbers. Um, and it's uh, it, it, there's there's a lot of great markets that we're missing out on. I mean, that's that, there's no no question there. You you move Oakland to Las Vegas. Sorry, Oakland fans. You move <laughs> Tampa to Tampa and not wherever the hell 
they are. No, they moved. They moved. They moved Tampa from St. Petersburg to another area in St. Petersburg, well, and not in Tampa. Correct. But, <laughs> so I'm saying you move them to Tampa. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, I see yeah. what you're saying. Sorry. So you move those two, and mm-hmm. then you give a team to one of those other, or you give two teams, right? Like you said, and then you gotta, you probably have to then split it up east west, American mm-hmm. national back to east west, kind of similar to the way the NBA does it. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know how you want to do your seedings. How many fucking teams make the playoffs now? Like eight? Like yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, whatever. You keep it like that. You don't let any more in. Eight on each mm-hmm. side. That's already 16. That's half the league. That's kind of crazy, but. Yep, but, but, but I mean, on, it's. But honestly, it... it's been kind of. I haven't hated the three game wild cards. I, I like it, but I, I really think that it should be the first two games at a home field advantage. You take that third third game and have it at the other. So if you split it, then you have it on the road. So you. You, you change the stadium. So like basically if you're taking um, like Minnesota versus Houston in the first round, so it's a three-game series, um, and the first two games would be in Houston, and they split 1-1, I think that third game should go into Minneapolis and uh, give, the, give the Minnesota – team and fans a chance to, to win at home and move on well then i think maybe the players association might say okay then we can't play 162 games because now you have to that's true a travel day yep uh no no uh, travel day no travel day no just tra- <laughs> no 7 a.m the next day after you get done 7 p.m the night before if you have like the dodgers mets <laughs> uh, sucks to suck i guess <laughs> that, hey, that's just part about of being a wild card team Yep, exactly. It's like if you don't don't like it, don't like it when you're division. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, but then and then you know you have the people, the fans, right? And I don't really right. buy, buy into this now. Granted, I am not a professional baseball player, but uh, where people are trying to spin it and be like, oh, having a week off for the first seed is actually bad, and all these first seeds that are or number one seeds that are, you know, losing in the first round because they were off for six days it's like you can't have it both ways right i don't know i don't know what the solution for that would be like you want to have something for being the number one seed but you also don't want it like time off is now a bad thing yeah so i mean the biggest thing is you know baseball is a game it's 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 so mental i mean like it's just your your focus so much you have your your focus on okay this is how i'm gonna face this pitcher this day this is how i'm going to pitch against these hitters on this day um i feel like a lot of times that that when that came about it was getting into players heads that okay well now we have a week off so we, we're gonna be thinking a lot and i i think that that's that's part of the problem and i think that if these players can get get past that which is, don't get me wrong that's not easy to get past um it, then I think that we'd we'd be in a better situation. But I think now that we've had one season, especially where people were really beginning to notice that these first seed teams, these top seed teams, were getting knocked off pretty quick. Um, now you're gonna see these top seed teams; they're gonna they're gonna want to say, eh, "Screw you guys! Like that's on you." So we're gonna go out there and win. Right. Yeah. So it could be fuel to the fire for some of these other teams who you know want to get that one seed and then go on and win. So it's, I mean, I'm not saying that like a team like the Dodgers didn't want to win last year. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I'm just saying that you, you, you're adding more than now. These teams are like, well, I mean, let's win. So we can say that they didn't want it last year. And that's just going to be fueled the fire, especially if it's a rival. Like if you see the giants come in somehow and, and get that number one seed and win the West, um, which is a very uh, bold prediction there. <laughs> um, as uh is if and they're gonna be like, all right, well, let's let's take this and then screw you, Dodgers. Like, we we did it, right? Like, so I think it's I think that that's just a different aspect of it. It's a different mindset. It may not be the best way to think about it, but that's at least how I've been thinking about it. Yeah, and I don't know if I heard any players or it come out that any players were like, oh, well, we lost because we had too much time off. Like mm-hmm. of those teams right. that did end up losing in the first round after having or the second round after having the first round by however you want to say it uh right um and you would never dare to say that as a player anyway no. you're not going to go to the media and be like oh well we yeah. lost 
We had too much time off. That's why we lost. Um, but, All right. Well, yeah. anyway, so we've digressed quite far away from our original topic here on expansions. <laughs> so I guess here, uh, in conclusion, going into the uh, going into the season starting tomorrow, uh, Jose, who is your National League champion, American League champion, and World Series champion? Okay. Well, my brain says... <laughs> My brain says Dodgers, obviously. I think everybody's mm -hmm. brain would say Dodgers, right? Mm -hmm. Dodgers or Braves, probably. But I'm a Cubs fan, uh, so I, I got to say Cubs. Just because all you have to do and what, what we've seen the past couple years of the playoffs is you just have to get into the playoffs. And then once you're in the playoffs, who knows what the hell is going to happen. Nobody had Diamondbacks Rangers to begin the year uh, no. last year. And if you did... I'll buy you a beer. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> buy, buy one of them fifteen dollar beers at the at the baseball stadium, so they don't have to build a new stadium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll contribute to the new White Sox stadium, I guess. But uh, I'll just I'll say the Cubs because I do feel like they can win the division, and once you're in the playoffs, whatever, it's it's mm -hmm. anybody's game. So I'll say Cubs. Then American League, I will say, I will say Yankees are kind of overrated. Um, and I will say, I'll say Mariners just All for right. the same reason. I feel like they're kind of in the same spot as the Cubs. I don't see them winning the division, but I could see them getting in through wild card. And just like I just finished saying, uh, you get in, who knows what's going to happen once you do. So I'll just say Cubs, Mariners and Cubs winning. All right. I like it. Uh, if I had to go here, I'm saying my American League, I'm going with Baltimore. I think they're going to come out strong this year. They had a great year last year. They have a lot of young talent who's very strong and only going to get better uh, unless their interpreter starts gambling on games. Um, <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I'm kidding. They're all English speaking guys who look exactly the same. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, the uh, and, and for National League, um, so I, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I think the the Dodgers and the Braves are probably the two easy picks. Um, I honestly, I, I'm going to, I'm going to say I want the Cubs and my overall prediction, my true prediction would be the Cubs and Cubs win it all. Um, so Cubs, Orioles, Cubs win it Welcome all. But if I'm podcast, trying, we're, we're Cubs <laughs> if I'm trying not to be, if I'm trying not to be biased here, um, right. I would not be surprised to see the Giants make a run. Well, yeah, they yeah. added a lot of depth to that team. I would be. I, I think they're going to be a playoff team, and I think they're going to put up a hell of a fight in the postseason. Um, and if we could somehow get like a Dodgers Giants uh, playoff matchup, that would be just so fun. Um, just for you know, it's like when back in 2015 when we had Cubs Cardinals. Um, it was just it was a riot. It was a blast. Yeah. Um, I mean, I Giants, think uh, Giants over Padres easy. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, but I, I think uh, Giants and Orioles in the World Series. Um, Orange and black. Ooh, that, yeah, man. Uh, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna go Baltimore. I think uh, I don't know. That's a battle of two nice stadiums. One team that's much younger. One team that's more built. Man, Honestly, that that'd be, that'd be a, that'd be a, a fun cool, series. Yeah, I was gonna say that'd be a cool World Series. East Coast, West Coast. That'd be that'd be a fun World Series. Um, I I think of so I guess like let's just say that um, with my unbiased opinion, I'm going to go Orioles Giants taking the Orioles to win it in six. Nice. Oh, I didn't say in how many games. Well, my, yeah, I didn't ask my, that. Yours is way more realistic than mine. Mine, I was just trying to play up the. Go you Cubs! Gotta make it to, well, you just got to make it to the dance, and then you who knows? And the Cubs have a very clear path to making it to the playoffs so that's they why. absolutely do and i agree 100 percent. and i mean the cubs they they had their great run there from about 15 to 18 when they started to taper off um and then everybody got started to get bad and they traded them off and they're just doing even worse um, <laughs> so uh i i think they do have a good clear path to make their way into the postseason um i think that the cardinals are always scary in that division but i do think the the cubs will be able to put up a fight against the reds and the brewers especially um because I just don't think the Cardinals will have the pitching staff to hold to hold off anybody in that division. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I'd like to see Cubs. I'd like to say Cubs. Um, I'll say Cubs, and five. I hope it's the Cubs. Cubs in five. There you go. 
I didn't want there to you say go. In well, six. You said in six. <laughs> well, you could have said in seven, or I guess you could have said in eight, but then I'd have called you an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I no, I, my, my heart can't take it. I think I took six years off my life in 2016. Um, so, but all right. Well, uh, thanks again for. Uh, for joining us here uh we're glad to be back and we plan to try and bring these out uh every so often hopefully weekly um we'll try and get sean in one next time we can discuss uh some other things uh more on the football side like the new rule changes that have come into play and uh and stuff along those lines so uh um i guess uh well uh we're glad to be back and uh hope you guys join us uh every time we have a show uh jose anything to add on before we close out here uh we'll try to not to digress as much but we haven't done this yeah. in a couple years so We'll try to focus. We just like we just like to talk baseball, man. I mean, we just like to talk baseball. Like we can talk, we can go from one topic to another without even thinking about it, and somehow end up in far left field. No pun intended. Exactly. So, um, all right. Yep, that's it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>